welcome episode 28 of that range live a show sometimes about golf chris i haven't seen you in what three days now yeah so it's good to see your smiling face how are you (laughs) i'm pretty good man it's a good weekend it's fun yeah fun trip up north uh yeah saw some friends on saturday i think we had a little backyard social distancing get together with another couple so uh yeah it's a good time although chicago's been officially rolled back we're like i think we'll officially roll back on friday is it chicago or is it illinois i I saw something about it I, i just didn't see all of it yeah no um if you're a bar that doesn't sell food you are no longer allowed to operate with people indoors, outdoors only, beginning on Friday. And then they're rolling back some of the uh, occupancy limits and stuff like that. So, but it doesn't sound like they're rolling. It's like it's not rolling back to phase. I think we're, are we in phase four right now? Yeah, no, they're not going back. It's like a phase three and a half. It's like, yeah, they're um, just limiting what four is. Yeah, allowed. so like indoor classes, like workout classes, are limited to 10 people. No more food inside, um, or no more uh, bars, indoor bars. So, pretty minor just, stuff. That's just Chicago, you said. Yeah, yeah, because okay. they broke us up into like eleven regions, and Chicago is a region. So, if any region goes, if any region averages over, I think it was four hundred cases a day, or maybe three hundred cases a day for seven days, um, that region gets rolled back. So that four regions thing is over now that we used to mm-hmm. be where they're like, we're not Chicago. How can you include us? Okay. Right. Right. Well, yeah, but otherwise that really doesn't change our life here in Chicago, <laughs> my life in no. Chicago, because I wasn't doing anything indoors anyways. Right. Well, so, whatever. Yeah. I think everybody can live with it. And this is just setting me on more of a path of destruction and coronavirus talk that we probably don't want me to go on because we are an apolitical pod. No, oh, I'm sorry. YouTube show now, not a podcast. That's right. That's right. Um, all right. So let's go into more where I saw you last. It was Friday, and yeah. we woke up. Let's not not never mind. When we woke up. We were on the road to Green Lake, Wisconsin, at approximately four in the morning. Yep. Me, you, all in separate vehicles. Me, <laughs> you, Josh Rivera, and. His buddy Randy, yeah, aka Rando, Rand, <laughs> Randingo, uh, Randingo. Um, uh, yeah, on, our, was, on yeah. our way. We never, we didn't even discuss like meeting up at some point on the way there. It was never even like an option because I think that would have required. I, I think, in my opinion, when you're leaving around four in the morning for approximately eight a.m. tea time, um. There's too many moving pieces. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll all meet up at this oasis at yeah six thirty a.m. Like, there, we'll meet, we'll I meet would at not Cheese Castle. <laughs> yeah, good, good, right, right reference. I would have been like, yeah, sure, cool, and then it'd be like it's seven thirty. Go, I'm still by Great America. I know I'll be, I'll be there in a half hour. Don't worry. And then meanwhile, I'll be like catching you at the turn. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I think that's we, we largely headed up, why uh, we headed up at four a.m. I got there at seven a.m. It was a three hour drive for all of us somehow. Even though I feel like I was farther south than you guys, but I guess not. No, no, I think you're you're further north than I am. Nah, yeah, let's just say who cares. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we had our three hour drives, Green Lake, Wisconsin, the golf courses of La Sonia. That's right. Um, for those that don't know, that is, I'm confident enough to say it is a historical golf course in America. I mean, I guess, yeah, oh, you def- could say that for sure. It's probably I'd say by definition, yes. Well, because yeah. it's old, it's still there. It's historical, but in terms of it has this historical significance. Um, 1930, the the course opens. It is the Links of Lasonia, designed by William Langford and Theodore Moreau. Right, Scottish inspired links course in the middle of Wisconsin. 
And uh, it was the whole point was to be a I'm going to get this is a very high level summary of history. I will probably have inaccurate details here, but in a nutshell, it was built to be a retreat for a stone company out of that's based out of Chicago land area for all the big wigs to go up mm-hmm. and have a country club up there, a really yep. upscale hotel and yep. Green Lake, obviously the lake up there, but being their escape up in Wisconsin. Well, right as they were opening it in 1930, they were writing a little thing called the Great Depression, which you know didn't bode well for anybody. But then I want to say it was approximately 1932. Uh, seven of these stone company executives got nailed for some sort of financial fraud. For fraud, yeah. And the whole dream fell apart. And it's like the American Baptist Association. I, I can't remember which title, but a, a Christian religious organization stepped in and purchased it. And basically, while well, they figured out what they were going to do with it for their operation, just kept it open and running and opened it to the public to come and play golf at this big time course. And it held, I want to say, Wisconsin Open. And then they had one called the yeah, Lasonia Open. Yeah. Yeah, but, did you uh, do you remember who was rumored to trying of trying to buy it before that the Baptist organization did? It was like no. When I, I remember reading it, being like, "Of course, it was Al Capone try, was rumored to try to buy oh, it." Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And well, the we, judge was the judge was like, "No, mm-hmm. no, you're not doing that. We're not selling it to Al Capone." It would have been awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> the Al Capone lore. And there's tunnels underneath the 10th hole that go right. all the way to Cicero. Right. right. But there's even crazy history about um, it was the Lawson estate that the land came from. And the yeah. guy came over and sent you know, found this land. And he was, he was a wealthy businessman from, I think, from Scott. No, um, he was from England. And can't remember. Go do the research. And he uh, <laughs> sent back for his family in eighteen or sometime after eighteen fifty two. And they're like, uh, "Your wife died while you were over there traveling, but yeah. your kids are coming." And yeah. basically put up like the first piece of pro or house up there, as you know, a mansion. And I, from that point on, it was basically this guy had this big chunk of land and. To this day, it's all still named after him and it's still a pretty big part of the history. But fascinating, typical, random thing to happen in the middle of Wisconsin going totally. back and being at know. I mean, they, what is it? I forgot who they said with all the names, but it, I mean, it was a who's who of American golf history who, who played there Byron Nelson, Sam Snead. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was a, I mean, People wanted to go and play this golf course. It was to this day. I mean, it's still a super unique, you know, middle of the country kind of uh, design, and and um, you just don't see it a lot. Yeah. Well, and as everyone will, well, I shouldn't say everyone. You read a lot of things, and they will say it is the best and most textbook Langford Moreau design. Now, I don't know. I'm not enough of an expert on them. There, yeah. If you know a little enough bit about people have this said stuff, it, I suppose it's true. But yeah, I don't know. I right. can't dispute it, it. It's full of their features that you, that you see in other places. It's that Lynx course. Just speaking of the golf course, is extremely impressive. It's so it met every expectation I had. Just I don't want to call it bizarre. But I, I don't really feel like we are afforded the privilege of playing much like it around here at all. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, Super unique. The greens, the green designs as far as being elevated with the big steep, um, you know, edges or whatever you want to call it. You know, everything is like every green is elevated and you're, yeah, you had to hit some shots and uh, it was super fun, man. When you sit there and look at every green, you're like, all right, I just have to hit this giant soccer field of a green that, right. hey, okay, it's right. sloped back to front. And then you get a ball up on it and you're like, geez, man, there, there's more moguls in this thing than a mogul ski course. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, but, um, for sure. 
I think I will say this, and we haven't gotten into the second course yet, but one, so you, you go up there, maybe this is us having high expectations, but you know, around here, everyone's like, yep, you go play Lasonia you go play Aaron Hills, you go play Sand Valley. Like you do mm-hmm. that loop and you have to do it. And it's really put on a pedestal that course. And sure. Rightly. So is a different conversation. It's very, it's, I mean, it's, it's a golf bro Mecca and in the yeah, area, I should say, saw that. It's, yeah. you see tons of it. All the, all the golf bros are out there, the guys trips. And yep. I, w- little did I realize, I didn't really understand that when I got there, but they, they have all these like old big houses on the property to get in the, which I imagine you can rent some of these, but you get off into the woodlands course and makes a little more sense, but you can rent all the, these houses and stay on the sure. golf course, which I didn't know. Shame on me, but you know, it doesn't feel like a resort, but it tries to do that a little bit. I think I expected this operation to be a little more polished. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I, you could say that. I think it's, um, it's, I think it's a weird thing. I think, um, well, run, one, I think it's run by, an organization that isn't necessarily interested in, or not at least maybe they're starting to get interested in making a lot of money mm-hmm. on the, on the course and taking advantage of that. But I don't think they've had much interest in that to date. I think it's been always just been like a golf course. Right. You know what I mean? And so like you can pay, we paid 155 bucks, right. To play there the whole day. And that's, that's kind of a, that's a steal here. And they're really, kind of any golf course, you know, let alone something of that sort of, uh, history and, and significance and design and that kind of stuff. So I don't know, you know, I know when we were reading up about it after we played, you had sent a couple articles now that they're starting to build more around the golf course to make it much more of that kind of destination, you know, and the the bar or whatever the restaurant is new, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think they're trying to make it a place where you want to just stay for three days, like the loop, you know, the loop they've, they've basically built, you know, or forest dunes. They've be, they built forest dunes and designed forest dunes to make you want to stay there at least well, one like, night. Like it's the point of it. Well, and I think, yeah. all right. Yes. It's not sand Valley and sand Valley. Like it doesn't have the prominence of it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't think it has to, and I don't think it needs to, but if you've never been there, even with your research, when you listen, when you listen to a lot of people, you almost you understand you're not staying at the big giant resorts with a billion restaurants on site, but you yeah. almost expect a little of that polished prominence, given how much the history is talked up, the can't miss factor, all that, and then you get there and yeah. it's like. I mean, there are clear things that make you go. There's. um as a whole package, it's a whole package of that place. There's a little, it leaves you a little underwhelmed. Now, I don't want that to be confused for saying if there's anything underwhelming about that Lynx course. Right. It is right. a world class golf course. It's tremendous. Yeah. For, yeah. For as far as like accessibility, public golf course, I mean, I don't know that you're going to find right. much better. I mean, it's pretty great. But the way the whole thing gets talked about in that, I'll just say like that Wisconsin, the new like it, it's still Wisconsin golf Wisconsin loop. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right. No, I get it. Yeah, it's still Wisconsin. Yeah. So it's yeah. hard to explain how you're like, yeah, okay. I mean, you're going to the halfway house, and there's just like a little, uh, you right. know, all right. the rods are burnt on a generic. And like a camp gas grill. grill right outside, okay. yeah, outside <laughs> right. of the building. Which right. the driving that, range, like, you're hitting blind shots over a hill. Which I guess, you know, after the out in the second hole or second and third hole, right? Where you're hitting blind shots anyway. So maybe they're just trying to prepare you for that. But yeah, right. yeah the like driving range is like, kind of weird. You have no idea what you're doing on that driving range and what yeah. value it's really adding out I, 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 to your practice other than swinging a club. I don't know. And frankly, I think they could they could do stuff to finish that driving range, but what are you going to do? And it's fine again, good deal, but there's nothing that's making me be like, you know what, Chris, that was a really fun. We, we had a great time. Let's be clear for sure. 
Because sure. I, th- I did, and Josh seemed to have. I can't speak. You yeah. know how you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> never know with you. But uh, we had an awesome time. <clears throat> but I can't tell you if you were like, hey, well, the four of us need to go out and play a bunch of golf again. I'd be like, yeah, let's get in our car, drive three hours, and go play there all day. I yeah, think so I, I would um, – if you told me that we could go up there and play the Lynx course as many times as we – possibly could and then stay the night and drive home i'd be down yeah i'd, I'd, I'd say let's go because i would more. play i'd play the links over and over and over again all day i wouldn't i don't want to drive home after it because that i you know when i got home i was like and then the next day i was just laid out for the day i was just so tired yeah same but here i'd well, prefer I was, to, to safely sleep and then safely drive home in the when morning. we were we were texting each other about it the next day we're all like is anybody tired you know from golfing all day and interestingly the answer is no it was the six and a half hours of driving in a car i did on in one day like that's the part i felt more than anything yeah but if you were to say to me too like oh um we're gonna go we're gonna go play sand valley let's go hit up lasonia on the way and then we'll go finish our way over to sand valley or we're at aaron hills let's drive over to lasonia before we go home yeah, it's awesome. That's exactly what you should do as it is. Mm-hmm. If you're on vacation, you're like, hmm, you know, I want to go on vacation and go to like a cool lake spot that has good golf nearby. Yeah, go get yourself a sick house on Green Lake, which according to our own For Tommy sure. O'Connell, that is doable. But go get yourself yeah. a nice house on Green Lake and then head over and play some golf. It's worth it. For sure. Not a six-hour round trip, day trip. Yeah, or... <sighs> Yeah, I'm trying to think of a scenario where I would drive there and play one round, and I wouldn't. You got to get me on that. You got to. You got to get me on. I have to play Lasonia Links twice to make it worth my trip. Yeah, which kind of gets leads us to at this point in uh, life. Yeah, now that which kind of leaves us to address the other course. That's the Woodlands. Yep, Woodlands Mm -hmm. course, right? Which I think is a perfectly fine. So it was at first it was only nine holes. They recently expanded it, right? I think the past twenty years was it like nineteen eighty three was the first nine. Yeah, Yeah. and then in the nineties, yeah, they put in something like that. Could be wrong, but yeah, they put in a second nine. Yeah, and um, I think you had said it when we reached. I don't know, might have been the third or fourth hole. Like, if they just spent again, if they spent a little money on that one. They could really have something, but it yeah. doesn't look like they really want to spend much money on. It. I mean, the some of the tee boxes were sand, you know, yep. and it was kind of uh, wasn't that well maintained. A lot of it. Um, you have a lot of drives down old, like what seemed like old paths with stone walls and everything, and you're sitting there going, you know, I don't know I, if this is authentic. That's one thing, but I don't know what it is. And well, then. Of course, in our research, we find out they actually do have through through that whole wooded area the original from the original like Lawson Estate days, which actually what yeah. they call them now. But the original states they had all these stone walls and paths and everything, and they they did. I mean, I'm sure they've been touched up and actually been put I'm in, sure but they, maintained or whatever. There are the original some of the original walls and stuff, and there there was a lot of cool factor to it, but it's. I mean, what is what's around on that course? Maybe is it like, is it even fifty dollars? Probably not. I don't think so. I, so it's it's a good deal. Like, let's face it: if that course was around here for forty to yeah. sixty dollars, we'd probably play it all the we'd time. Play. Sure, for sure. Get some good views of the lake. Uh, you see a lot of the cool. I mean, I think it is wild. You'd be in the middle of the woods for three holes, and all of a sudden you see like a private property trail, and it's just a house. Not yeah. you know, just a small like, right. cottage in the middle of nowhere that doesn't look like anyone's been in and God knows how long. But yeah, yeah, it was it, it was fine. Just needed some money pumped into it. But um, yeah, nevertheless, we still yeah. enjoyed it. And then we played some more on the links after that. But oh, um, great time for sure. The back nine of the links. Let's just jump back. That 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 back nine is just fantastic. I love the back nine. It's just wide open. And I think what is it? It goes like five, three, five, three, five, three. Right. Kind of yes. unique. Yeah, in that way. it goes on that six hole stretch where you don't play a par four. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I was thinking about it. I'm like, well, back in front, of, I don't know. I kind of think the first hole, 
green complex is cool nothing crazy the second right. hole has a stupid blind shot that i think is the dumbest <laughs> thing in the world right. it's just if rough, anything man there's no clear aim point even if you know the course i don't know what yeah. you're supposed to really do with it yeah. um the third hole is also sort of a i don't want to say throwaway hole but nothing that nothing was when the great. greens got uh, the green was kind of cool on that one because i think that was the first really dramatic green that's what i hold out on right I third was, hole i was i was saving that so if, if we oh yeah but i think that's when it was like pretty pretty severe slope that you had to get up and i yeah, was right on it that's why well, I where, remember I that. where you were yes it was straight up <laughs> um but I think like no, I think that first hole green was pretty dramatic. Just where the pin was and where we played, we didn't really see it that dramatic. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and then you hit that like two hundred yard all uphill with carry <sighs> par three. A par three. But at the end of the day, it's a par three, so you're kind of like, oh, okay. And then you have a par five. Yeah, the downhill that, par five that runs along the road and sort right. of that's a good point of where like is this big run or is this a historic American golf course? Yeah, and it's like once you get past that tee shot and you're hitting into the green with the bunkering it has and the green itself, it's like from that point forward on the whole rest of the course, it's like okay, let's go. Yeah, every yeah, every yeah. hole is good from that point out. That's true. I agree with that. Except that That's, one. Maybe is that, that the one? Is that the hole that um, that Rando eagled? He went for it and eagled. I think. Yeah, it's the one he he. I mean, he, I was like, is that your second shot? And it was stiff to like. Yeah, I was sitting right next to the pin. Yeah, yeah that's right. I it think, was that hole. I think it, it was, was that, that hole. hole. Yeah. But since you you already buried the lead, let's get into that. Um, did you hole out three times? On the day, I did. I did <laughs> three, <laughs> right? Not three. two, three times. Those three so it was times, like yeah. Third hole of the day, as Chris just mentioned, he plows it into a rough grass face of a bunker that is long, shaggy. The ball hangs up just at the bottom of it. There's nothing he should have been able to do and just stabs a wedge into the thing <laughs> again. Right. What's uh, eight. 25 in the morning yeah and right. god bless it the thing lands and just rolls right in yeah pulls out and no i mean and it was probably what 12 feet you had to clear to get that ball up there oh yeah and height i would say so because i couldn't see it i had to go up the hill and um it it rolled for so long that i think josh and randy both looked away i was gonna missed say it neither, going to the hole <laughs> i was the only one who acknowledged it i'm like they how gave come up on it how come no one said anything and you came up and I was, I was like, I thought my reaction pretty much indicated it went in. But then I think, cause the other two didn't do anything and they're looking up yeah. like, where'd you go? <laughs> yeah. And I go, he's it. He went in, he hold out. Right. Oh, <laughs> right. All right. So yeah. yeah, you hold out there and then yeah. I don't, I think the next one was, and so we had got a little bit of grumpy Chris for the second 18 of the day and we we're playing our match, which is like all of a sudden way too serious. And what's the point of even playing? And it's like, Oh, that's right. Everything's so serious. And you and I are a team. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, God, we should have smoked them in retrospect. We just, yeah, we should them. have, but we should have, I played, I was terrible off the tee. Terrible. I mean, at that point I felt like it was in that, Hey, to be fair, consider what we've done today. So, but yeah. um yeah you're in a shallow bunker with yeah. I don't want to say you're short sided but you you're behind the green trouble yeah. trouble if you blade one back down you'd be screwed and right. uh, you have maybe 10 yards of maybe 10 yards of green and you just hit this nice little skid of a bunker shot just lands, little poof, and floats right. on in and for right. our birdie. And I'm like, I just, sh I mean, really, we should have just shat the bet on the whole, on the whole <laughs> all together, but between the both of us, there you go, yeah. hole out for another one. And then I can't remember yeah. the other, the other hole out you had, but yeah, I can't, um, I can't remember that one either. Um, was it sad. on, was it on that par three on the back nine? Um, 
I think it was the second time we played it, but I don't, yeah, I don't remember the third one. I, I do remember it was three. It did turn into quite the long day. Oh, God, it was quite a, yeah. the long day. Yeah. It was a how super about, long day. How about in the first one on the Lynx course when I hit a, I can't remember what number hole it was, it was par five. I hit, it was right after, it was in that three, five, three, five, three, five span. Mm-hmm. And I hit probably a 340 yard tee shot, but into the fairway <laughs> right. running parallel yeah, on, on the other side <laughs> right. to the point where after I was the first hit, I just started walking and not like a walk of shame because of where it was made no practical sense for a cart to go over there. Cause you couldn't get back, yeah, which in the end right. you did come get me and thank yeah. God you did. Cause I just brought a seven iron. And then while you were there, I'm like, well, I'm in, I mean, I'm in, I'm in, not the rough adjacent to our fescue. I am in right the far side rough too. And this guy starts putting right. my ball. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's mine. Yeah. Puts it down. And you drive up right in time. I go, eh, whatever. I'll try it. It wasn't sure of my distance. After calculating, we figure it was probably about a 265 yard shot to the pin. And <laughs> You know, I should be way out of this hole. I pulled that trusty Tour Edge Man. EXS Pro forward. So ridiculous. Drill the thing out of the rough, carry a bunker, and right on the green, and I'm putting for eagle. And <laughs> came up pretty that was one short. Of your, that was one of your, what, five birdies on the day or something? Yeah, I came up. It's funny because I'm like, God, I left that thing like, I thought I pounded it. It was downhill. These greens are quick. And I go, oh. Yeah, great. That should be me a nice, easy birdie tapping. And it stops just out of nowhere. Yeah, like that's right. That's 10 right. feet short. And I still made the putt. Nice bird. I still on sunk that. it. Yeah. And to that point, I got there, man. I was in no shape to go off. And I like I was just so dead. And you're like, are you keeping score? I'm like, absolutely not. I go, I got a ballpark <laughs> one going in my head. So as we're getting to as we're getting to the end, and I, I have a a questionable th- four birdies, officially three. And the reason we say that is I had one that was it was tracking but firm, but if it didn't have the pool noodle in there, I yeah. think it would have had enough depth to drop yeah. in. Instead, it stayed yeah. on the noodle, r- went around 316, came out. Yeah. Like, I'll give you the birdie. And I was like, no, yeah, no that no, counted. No. That counted. I'm not counting it still. But if no, I did, I know, you know why you don't f- count it? Yeah, for the yeah, I said I, my exact words were no, I can't take it because then I have to give you your uh, your coronavirus hole in one. That's right. And Josh, like I already gave to my like, Josh. You don't. And I, my joke with Josh the whole day was, Josh, you don't own a dot com. You can't. You don't get to say. Right, right. So our partners are Chris. I'm like, hey, you're not paying that bill, Josh. That's how <laughs> that's how golf works. As long as you own a dot com, right. you're an expert. Right. Um, you make the calls. You're the rulings. That's right. right. Golf isn't the rulings. You're the ruling. Right. So. And I said to you at the end, I go, I, ha- I should have, let's just say I have rough, I have four, three official, four unofficial birdies on this round. Don't know my exact score. It's a pretty sad day, though, when you're probably comfortably in the 90s and had four birdies in your round. <laughs> <laughs> one on a par three, one on a par, you know, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, you were all or nothing. You were all or nothing. That's my golf game in a nutshell these days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't really feel like I have a ton ton more to cover on Lasonia. I I love that Lynx course so much. Um, it would be nice. I will say it would be nice to be there in a non-coronavirus time. Yeah. Where you can like. Well, two things. One, non-coronavirus time where you can go and hang out at the pub. Two, we don't have Josh Rivera booking tea times for us. So that we could actually have time to sit in the pub and take a breath. I say you went there. I'll let you. I'll let you tell that story. <laughs> you want. Well, I don't. I don't remember agreeing to this. I could have swore that the tea times were set up for eight o'clock and one o'clock, but apparently they were set up for eight o'clock and twelve ten. Well, when I talked to you the first time about this, when it came together, you said, "Yeah, first two times at eight. And I'm like, Really, for a whole day of golf in there, we should be starting earlier. But obviously, it would have been harder, to, much harder to get up and go. Yeah. So we I mean, could have started at seven, but yeah, not doing that. Only person who had a shot at pulling that off would have been you. Well, I guess Josh was. Either way, point made. So eight's yeah. about when you have to start, given the way we did it. 
And then you were like, yeah. And the second tee time's at one. And I'm like, well, if our pace is good and, you know, I, we're playing the big course first, it's, it will take longer. But if mm-hmm. our pace is good, we're going to get tons of golf in. And that's that's probably just about the break we need. And then we're on the – I think we're on the 15th green. Yeah. No, 16th green. Of and of yeah of uh yeah of the link first, course. first round yeah or or we're in the fairway something like that and Josh yeah. looks at his his watch and goes we're on the first tee for the second round in twenty minutes and the <laughs> like I'll just say uh, the looks at you could tell he was playing with three dads with the looks that right. came over our faces <laughs> right like what. I feel like there was that, you know, that meme with that surprised look meme guy, like that look was like from all of us. <laughs> like, and then wait, he, like his immediate, it was like, he, he got the looks. He goes, yeah, we'll be all right. Go, no, no, we won't be now. Yeah. Thankfully, uh, probably everybody who was playing that day was doing the same thing because we definitely did not tee off when we were supposed to. We basically right. refilled our waters. Um, we let we let a single go ahead of us and a twosome go ahead of us and right right at the end of the I day wait. it probably wouldn't have mattered I don't know how busy that course that second course was right we could have probably you know slotted somewhere but yeah the big day I, I mean changed shoes and socks filled up water got back out there right. and we're like and no one we even checked us and, in and then I <laughs> right right there was no start or anything and then when we finished that round we went straight to links again. And, Played, Same thing, played, yeah, nobody checked us. Or whatever. Yeah, nobody cared. That's what was kind of nice, too, is like it's a pretty laid back vibe, too. It's like, you know, they the starter walks you through the first two holes, you know, for your t- first tee time. And then after that, it's kind of like, see, I go felt play like golf. If, I felt like at first, I go, I don't know how laid back this is. Remember, um, mm-hmm. I, I hit. Oh, yeah, of, we got chased a little bit. We which, did get chased uh, a little bit. I was like, hey, take it easy, bro. Yeah. I hit easily one of my worst tee shots i've hit this year uh on the first tee you know warm i just literally got out of my car i i was putting on my shoes and socks in the golf cart and the guy so i hit one in the woods and i'm like that thing could be back in kenosha so (laughs) it's fine i hit another one that actually ended up being uh Taking the bend perfectly, I'm like oh, this yeah. is a nice easy layup. Don't yeah. worry, I screwed it up. Um, it took me a good ten holes to be even be able to hit a ball. Um, so then we're on the second hole or going to the tee, and this guy comes up. No, we're going down the hole, and the guy's like, "Yeah, uh, did any of you hit one in the trees or like, hit? No, what do you say? Did any of you hit a really, 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 really bad, bad shot. tee shot? <laughs> right? I'm like, oh yeah, I did. I'm not, I'm not yeah. too proud." And he goes, is it a Kirkland? Which, of course, I brought the Kirkland signature out. No big deal. And uh, <laughs> I go, it was, it, this is exactly why, for the record, I knew this would happen. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was me. And he go, and he's like, here it is. And so I yeah. go to get it. And he's, I was, I'm like, are we having a Josh Rivera at uh, whatever course I was with? <laughs> the guy's right. holding a hostage on the other side of the fence and not giving it to him. Yeah. And finally, he like, he's like, Really making sure I knew how bad it was. I was like, dude, I got three hours of sleep last night. I'm just happy I made it here in one piece. I don't right. expect can- to be able to hit a golf shot for about another three hours. Can I just like, if it didn't break my- a window, just give me the ball. All right. Yeah, or kill someone. Like, can I just have my K Sig back so I can lose it again <laughs> shortly? And I did. Um right. Yeah, I was like, I, I, and I was, man, they are not letting us breathe out here. So yeah. I thought I thought we were in store for that all yeah. day, and uh, turns out we weren't. Couldn't no, complain. Sorry. Yep. And also, always great to grab a moon man and a spotted cow. You know, that's true. Saying. That is true. It's a good time. More importantly, I had fun playing golf with all of you guys as usual. Hopefully, we can find ourselves a nice special round of golf somewhere again soon. I'm in. All right, Chris. It's been a pleasure catching up with you this week. I hope everybody enjoys a shorter show where all we talked about was the golf courses of Lasonia. I'd say go do it. Go do it. Don't make a big trip to do just that in one day, but go do it. Make it. I would would highly recommend doing it. I think I think it's worth it for sure. It's the best deal you're going to get. Read about it before you go. Don't do what we did. (laughs) 
<laughs> you right. learn about the course before you go, and you'll have a, you'll have an even more appreciation for it than I think we did at the time. And don't read the golf courses website only; they do actually a pretty bad yeah. job. Yeah. I was going, oh, by the way, I didn't see it because of obvious reasons. The, they have William Langford's putter in the clubhouse, so you could see. Oh, his that's kind of cool. Yeah, and he was a good player too back in the day. I just want to point he that was. out. was. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's a good time. Look forward to doing it again. Chris, I'll talk to you later, bud. Sorry, man. Bye, everybody.